Hello and welcome to day two of our nature journaling week here at Lillian Thistle. Today we are going to focus on your very first journal entry. Um, I'm going to give you five steps um, uh, that you can follow to just start out. I, but before I share those with you, I just want to make sure that you know that there are no hard and fast rules for nature journaling. Um, you can go so many different directions. If you're more, if you have more of a scientific brain and a numbers brain, you can go that way. If you love art and you want to, you know, practice drawing, then it's a great thing for that. So just remember that there are no hard and fast rules that you can do whatever you want. These are just guidelines. These are just ways to help you get, get into it and get started. Okay, so we're going to start with our first step, and that is to find something to journal about. So I'm going to turn this camera around and I'm going to show you some, um, a few tips. So, okay, here, we so go. here we are in the back part of our property here. And um, I see a whole bunch of really beautiful trees that have not started uh, blooming or don't have any leaves on them yet. Um, and so this is my first, uh, my first tip for you. So as you're getting started, you might be tempted to draw a tree and to like say, today I'm going to nature journal about a tree. And that's great, but I would, I would, um, I don't know, encourage you or challenge you to get go in a little bit closer. So we're just going to get a little bit closer to this, this tree here. And I'm going to notice some details, like how beautiful is this, this moss that is growing on this tree. And then I'm going to look down, I'm going to look at the bark and keep looking and oh my goodness, what is this? It looks like a little web with some some little baby somethings okay and then I'm gonna just keep going down and I'm looking at all the details so my first piece of advice is to just focus on something that's small start with something small that you can really hone in and look at the details on um, so today I'm gonna show you what we're gonna focus on um, together here so I'm going to um, look down and I, there's a whole bunch of beautiful new grass growing here in this little grove of trees. Um, but I noticed something as I was looking in the grass, I noticed something that was a little bit different that I wanted to focus on today for my journaling. So I'm going to show you what okay, that is. Okay, so as I was just looking at the grass, I noticed this leaf. And so I decided I'm going to focus on this today. So that's my the first step is to find something that's small, that's interesting to you, and pretend, as you're looking at it, pretend like you would have to describe this to somebody who's never seen it before. Um, you know, what would, what would you tell them about it? What kind of things would you, would you tell them? So if I was gonna describe this to somebody, I would say that it is round on the top, and it's long, and then it comes down to a point. And then um, down the middle, there is a line. And on the back, there are really cool, a whole bunch of little lines, little veins on the back. Okay. And so just imagine that you're describing whatever you're focusing on to somebody who's never seen it before. And then you can write down your description in your journal. You wanna pay attention um, to your five senses. What does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? Um, you don't necessarily want to taste it unless you know for sure it's something that you can eat. Um, but yeah, just what are your, what are the five senses telling you? What does it sound like? You can put it up to your ear and see what it sounds like. And so put those things in your journal and then you are going to, um, do the next step, which I will show you. Okay, so this is what I've written in my journal. Um, and again, if you just have a blank piece of paper, this is stuff that you can write in, in your journal wherever you want on your page. Um, I just put the date, the time, the weather, and the location. And then in my notes section, I just paid attention to my five senses. So I noticed that it was green, that it was rounded at the top and long and narrow and pointed down at the bottom. My ears didn't really hear anything when I put it up to my ears. There was really no sound, um, but it did feel really velvety soft and really flexible. It smelled like grass and it actually, when I did taste it, because I happen to know that it, I, I can taste it. <laughs> I, I would encourage your kids not to taste most of the time, but um, 
when I tasted it, it tasted like lettuce. And then I put some questions here at the bottom. So, um, so that's that section. So that's, that's step one is to just find something and pretend you have to describe it to somebody and um, just pay attention to your five senses. Okay, step two um, is going to be where we record record um, kind of what it looks like in our journal. So I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna look at the shape and I'm gonna try and break it down. And so like I said before, I noticed that it was curved here at the top and then it came kind of straight down into a point. And so I'm gonna do that in my journal. So I'm just gonna do kind of a circle for the top and then I'm gonna have it come down a point at the bottom okay and then I'm just gonna erase this part you remember as you're doing this that your journal is not does not have to be a pretty picture this is just you're just always think I'm trying to help somebody who's never seen this before know what it is okay and so I know that this has a line going down here so I'm just gonna follow that line okay and then I want to add some of the details that I see on the back. So on the back of this are all kinds of veins and so I want to add some of those just so that somebody finding this will know that the back of it had lots of little veins on it. Okay. Okay. Okay, you want to, so then, um, so I guess the point of this is that you're, you're getting close-up detail. You want to make sure that you have that close-up detail. Okay, all right. So now you're going to label it. So because I don't have um, any colors with me here, I'm just going to say, I'm going to label this and I'm going to say green. And I'm gonna say that these little things here, I'm gonna circle that, say veins. And I also noticed another detail here that it kind of comes out right here. So I'm just gonna do that. Get that detail. Okay. And so then I'm gonna say tiny, points on side okay all right and then at this point you can if you've got a nature journaling guide or if you know with your phone you can look this up and see if you can find out what it is but I usually do that once I get inside um, just so I can enjoy this process a little bit more so I um, I like to just reserve that for when I get back inside Okay, so that is step four, label, labeling it. And then step five, I like to just write down any thoughts about what I'm thankful for, what, I, what I'm thinking about, what I've discovered. Um, and you can do it in whatever section you want. I'm going to show you some of my journals when we get inside and how I did that more in those journals. Okay, so remember, step one is to find something small that you can focus on and really look at it, really study it. Two is to record in your journal the things that you, um, that you have discovered about it and to imagine that you are explaining it to somebody who's never seen it before and who doesn't have it in front of them. So your five senses help with that to start, start with that process. And then we'll, we'll talk about some other things too later on in the week for that part. Step three is to draw it. Draw the details. Um, as best you can and just remember that the whole point of drawing it is so that somebody who's, who's never seen it before will kind of have an idea of what it looks like. Um, focus on the details and on the things that make it different from other, from other uh, things that you have seen. And then step four is to label it. So just draw a line and write something um, about all the details that you have drawn. And step five is to write down what you're thankful for or the feelings that you have as you're journaling. And that's it. 
So I'm going to take you inside the barn and I'm going to show you a few of my nature journal entries that are a little bit uh, different so that you kind of get an idea and I'll also show you I'll also show you some of the kids um, entries to give you some more examples. All right, we'll see you okay, inside. I wanted to start with this one. This one is one of my daughter's journals and I just love her entry here. Um, she did a lot of different signs of spring in here and um, so she did a stickery bush that she sat and watched. She's, um, we'll talk about sit spots later, but she sat in the same spot um, and each month kind of journaled how, how a bush changed. And so this time the stickery bush had a little bit of leaves on it. She saw some moss on a rock, um, some tulips starting, and she heard a chickadee singing. And so she put all of that here and then I just love what she put here. She says, it is sunny and perfect and, and the high today will be 73. I love that there is a breeze and I feel like everything is blooming. The stick bush has little green sprouts on its branches. A young tree is also sprouting as well with green sprouts. All the rocks seem to be very cheerful as, they, as well despite the gray moss on them. There are many beautiful birds chirping for it always seems that birds are always cheerful, bringing their beautiful songs with them. The tulips are also sprouting with their vibrant color. And then she has some questions. How do things get their color? How do things get their texture? How do things get their sound? So these are just some questions that she's asking. So I just loved, loved that journal entry. This is one of my kids that um, she struggles sometimes with being cheerful, but every time she nature journals, she it's amazing to see what that does for her. Okay, so that's an example there. Um, this is an example that I showed you a little bit yesterday from when they were just really little. And all I expected from them um, with nature journaling was just they could put whatever they wanted to in their journal and just gave them some tools and they did that. So this is, um, this is my younger daughter's. Um, she saw a robin and this is kind of how she got the red breast on the robin and painted that. Um, as you can see, there's like no rhyme or reason, like there's some blank pages and some not. Here's some animals that she saw. Um, this is after we had a little lesson on um, seasons and um, seeds and that kind of thing. And then this is later on, she did a brown sparrow. So, so really no rhyme or reason, just um, getting them in the habit of sitting down and um, recording what they see or what they want to record. Okay, and I just wanna show you a few pages in my journal. As I've done it over the years, I've um, done different um, techniques, different things. So I just wanna show you some examples of that. So, um, you know, I'll do like a big picture. I'll put the weather and all of that kind of information up here and then just a little bit about um, the subject. Um, this is one of my favorite entries because I recorded just a little moment in time with my son. He was sitting right next to me. And um, and so I wrote down just little details about him and about what we were discovering together as we were nature journaling. And so this is always, I love to, um, to put those little moments into my journal so that when I go back, I can just bring myself right back to that moment in time. Um, these are just more examples of me just writing. I, put, I usually put like some things that are interesting about what I'm seeing and then um, just kind of record the moment. These are some good examples of taking, taking whatever I'm focusing on apart and just kind of focusing on the parts of it. So this is just a mushroom that was in our yard. So I just kind of um, put it in half and then labeled all of those areas and, and got that. Same with this one. Um, this one shows kind of um, the frog in two different, um, scenarios, so kind of in flight and then just sitting so that I have those details. Uh, let's see. This is another example of just, um, you know, taking the time once I got back to label the different parts of the leaf and to learn those names. Um, this shows different, um, you know, it shows all the different stages, I guess, of these plants. Uh, this was an interesting one. Um, this was actually, I've, this poor bird was actually, had died. And so I could get really close up to it and see the feet. Um, and it was just amazing. The feet were just amazing. And, um, and it was really interesting during this time. I, it was almost kind of a sacred experience for me to sit there and really 
um, have a chance to get that close to this bird and to see all the details. And it reminded me, um, you know, it always brings me back to, to God. And it reminded me that God knows all of the, the intricate details of our lives. So just looking at all the details and just the feet of this bird. And um, it just helped me to kind of think introspectively about, <laughs> about God and, and his creations. Um, this one is an example of, I did like the full squirrel, but then I, I focused on the feet. This is a fun way to just um, add to your journal. You can put details kind of going going up the sides. I did that here with the horsetail reed as well. Just just a fun, a fun way to add details. Um, some more entries. Uh, this is kind of a fun way to do it as well. I wanted to focus on the clouds, so I left that blank, but then I just put some writing here. So yeah, those are just some fun examples. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, obviously because I am an artist and I love art, um, and it comes, it comes fairly easy to me after years of practice. Um, my, my books are more um, of an art journal, more than like a scientific uh, journal. So whatever works for you, um, do that. Don't feel bad that your drawings aren't perfect or um, that it doesn't look beautiful because that's not the point of a nature journal. You can, you can definitely improve your drawing skills as you practice all, all the time. You know, every time that you're journaling, try drawing and you'll get better at it. And I want to do in the future, I am going to do some classes on how to get better at drawing for nature journaling. But Right now, just focus on uh, the details and what you can record and what's interesting to you in your journal. Okay, we are done for today. We will see you tomorrow um, for our third day of nature journaling. We're going to talk about three things that will help you as you're journaling to, um, to really discover what you are, what you're looking at. So it will be the three things are I notice, I wonder, and it reminds me of. So stay tuned. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.